Good morning. Today I would like to just encourage you with a simple verse from Hebrews chapter 7. When we look at the high priest that we need, we need a high priest that is above sin and that has ascended unto the highest heavens. What does that mean? That means it's somebody that has the ability to raise us up into the highest heavens with him. If you read the Hebrews chapter 7 carefully, you will see that the Bible says that the law made nothing perfect. The law cannot make anything perfect. The only thing that the law has is it contains the prophetic word about the oath that God has made, which was that he would bring forth someone that is above sin and death and that through him he promises us eternal life. So that which the law says is that we should simply believe upon Jesus. The oath, the message, the promise is contained in the law. And that would be the same as what anything that would be contained in a container. Uh, we will find that, one. let's say you've got uh, food, you, you go to KFC and you buy yourself some chicken. That chicken is in a container. As much as what the container cannot give you life, that's how much the law cannot give you life because it's simply the container in which the promise is contained. So the true message of the law is to believe upon Jesus. That is the container. None of us uh, celebrate the container. We celebrate what is inside the container, and that is Jesus Christ. That is what it is all about. So when we look at Jesus, we look at the promise that God has. We find in the Old Testament a message that was given to the Jewish people, that there was a promise that a priest would arise according to the order of Melchizedek. In simple English terms, this is what it would mean. They would, a priest would arise that cannot die, that can make intercession for us and intercede between life and death for us. In other words, he can bring us from death to life. That is the promise. So when we look at the Old Testament and we look at the promise contained in it, the promise is this. The Old clearly points out to us that in our own ability we will simply die and that we are of the dust of the earth. But that God promised a person that would be higher than death itself, that would conquer death in the flesh, and that the promise is that as we believe upon him, he would bring the life of God to us. This life of God that he would bring to us would leave us in exactly the same place as what Christ finds himself in as he's seated at the right hand of God. He was born from Mary. He died. He was then bodily raised from the dead. And as the person that was born from Mary, now that was under the rule and power of mortality that has now conquered that and has shared in the fullness of God, even in his physical body, that is what God promises us. Now that sounds like far-fetched, it sounds like impossible, it sounds like, Bertie, I don't know what you're talking about. It might, You might look at the scriptures and try and see it that way, but let us be real. Let us look at things in the perspective of true reality. Do you think people are going to be raised from the dead? Do you think that immortality will come to humans? Well, that is the gospel. That is the good news. The rule of heaven, the rule of life has come to earth and God has started to bring forth the rule of life in this earth. As we believe upon it and as we face the rule of Jesus as our intercessor, now, intercession is compared of two words. It means, uh, it literally means to hit the mark, to take a javelin and to throw it right into the bullseye. So when Jesus comes and he intercedes for us, the scripture says that since he can never die, he can hit the bullseye for us. And that is he can bring us to eternal life. And when we look at the kind of eternal life Jesus possessed, it's very simple. His grave is empty. He was raised from the dead. The man lives forever. And, the, and his, even his physical body was born from the Father, wherein the fiber of the fibers of his flesh, if you want to call it like that, possesses the eternal life of God. That is what God has come to bring us. And if people like to know it or not, 
that is the solution to all the problems of the world. No politician would like to know this um, and see this as the answer to the problems of the world because that would remove him as being the answer or his ideologies from being the answer. The true answer is resurrection, belief in Jesus, the Holy Spirit bringing forth the life of God inside you, spirit, soul, and body. That is the true answer to all the problems of the world. And that is what God has brought in Jesus Christ. And we who have believed in this, we are already seeing God's answer manifesting in our lives. And so we uh, become those who point people to the answer, which is Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So I just want to encourage you with this. The high priest that you need, that which you truly need in order to have life, God has brought in Jesus. Just believe upon him. He is the answers. He is the answer to all the problems of the world, and we can rest in that. Well, this is a short message. I would like you to just think and ponder a bit about this. There's a lot of meat around this. It is definitely thought-provoking. Ask God this question, say, I would like to know what role the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension on high plays in salvation for me today. What role does it play? And ask that in faith. You will see that God will start to answer you that question and it will change your life forevermore. Amen.